Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio says there are three Hall of Famers that wore jersey number 72. Can you think of who they are and will they make our top 10? Because we're going to go to the best players that wore jersey number 72 in NFL history. And it's coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. This is your host, Darren Hayes, and we are podcasting from America's North Shore, bringing you the memories of the gridiron, one day at a time. So in taking the snap from the SportsHistoryNetwork.com and handing off to PigskinDispatch.com, let's go no huddle through today's football history headlines. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings you sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876 including t-shirts long sleeve shirts phone cases mugs blankets pillows towels and even shower curtains go to sportshistorynetwork.com row number one for access to the full row one catalog and for gallery prints and gift items plus get a 15 percent discount off all prints on the row one pictorum gallery with coupon code shn15 follow the link on the show notes Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com, and welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive football history and to the Sports History Network, your headquarters of sports yesteryear. We are sure glad to present to you today the NFL's greatest players that wore jersey number 72 in our Football by Numbers series. And boy, do we have some great players to talk about. 72, very, very interesting. And the Pro Football Hall of Fame, to answer your question at the very beginning, says there are four players that wore jersey number 72. But there's a little bit of a dispute. Well, let's go over the names first. They said Dan Deerdorf, Bill George, Henry Jordan, and Ray Nitschke. Now, I could not find anywhere where Ray Nitschke wore jersey number 72. So it probably wasn't in any game situation. Maybe he had it as a rookie for a day or something and then traded. I'm not sure. But I couldn't find, and so I'm not going to talk about Nitschke as a Hall of Famer award jersey number 72. But Dan Deerdorf, Bill George, Henry Jordan, well, we will talk about them. And I guess first of all we want to talk about is Dan Deerdorf. Now, we just discussed him on our Football History Headlines June 29th, so just a little over a month ago. And Dan Deerdorf, what a player. Now, he ended up playing tackle for the Michigan Wolverines from 1968 to 1970. And the NFF... Uh, National Football Foundation tells us that Deerdorf made all-conference twice and was a consensus All-American in 1970 under the instruction of the legendary University of Michigan head coach Bo Schembechler. Deerdorf, he ended up playing in the East-West Shrine game, the Hula Bowl, and the 1971 College All-Star Game. So he was in a lot of bowl games. He eventually made it into the College Football Hall of Fame and, of course, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So he's in both halls of fame. As an offense alignment, played center, guard, and tackle for the St. Louis Cardinals his entire career. And he ended up making the Pro Bowl an amazing six times, including three first-team All-Pro selections. The NFLPA even selected three different seasons him as the league's best blocker. That's pretty big time when your peers... Your union that you're in, the NFLPA, National Football League Players Association, picks you three times as the league's best blocker. Pretty good stats there. So, you know, 1971 all the way to 1983, he was a St. Louis Cardinal 
playing uh, both the tackle positions, played a little guard, played a little center, uh, mostly known as those tackles. Uh, great player, and we are going to put him on our top 10 greatest NFL players wearing the number 72. Now our next player up, well, he's pretty good too. Bill George was a linebacker that played for Wake Forest. After graduated college, well, he ended up playing in the NFL for 15 years for both the Bears and the Rams. Now, the Pro Football Hall of Fame has a nice piece on Bill George and his bio on their site, and Bill made a now historic move that permanently changed defensive strategy in the National Football League. On passing plays, you see, George's job was to bump the center and then drop back. George, noting the Eagles' success at completing short passes over his head, decided to skip the center bump, and he just dropped back immediately. That just threw off the timing of the quarterback, and two plays later, he caught the first of his 18 pro interceptions. And no one can swear to which middle guard in a five-man line first dropped back to play middle linebacker and it created the classic 4-3 defense, but George, Bill George, He's the most popular choice. Bill had eight seasons where he was selected as an all-NFL player, as well as eight where he made the Pro Bowl roster and George's 18 interceptions were surpassed only by his 19 career fumble recoveries. Pro Football Hall of Fame, well, they came calling on Bill George's name in 1974's induction class. And today, we at the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, well, we're calling Bill George's name to put him on our top 10 list of greatest number 72s and well deserves that honor. Now, Henry Jordan, he's our next player we're going to talk about. Henry Jordan was born in Emporia, Virginia and was a defensive tackle from the University of Virginia. And according to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Jordan played 13 seasons in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns and the Green Bay Packers, two pretty good teams. He was voted as an all-NFL player six times and played in four Pro Bowls and seven NFL title games plus Super Bowls one and two. And we told you Cleveland and Green Bay, both pretty good teams. And he was in Enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, after his death, unfortunately. He didn't get to see that alive. But, you know, what a great player he was. You know, as we told you, four Pro Bowls, five times as all pro, and all those championship games, including Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II, well, that's pretty good stats, and that's good enough for me. And also, the uh, pro football reference, uh, I remember John Turney and Nick Webster putting those stats in there for the uh, pro football reference. 59 and a half career sacks in his 13 years that he played, 11 of those with Green Bay, two with Cleveland. And he is also going on our list as our third player, and what a great player he was. Now, I guess the next guy we want to talk about is probably one that I'm kind of surprised, and probably many are, is not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and that's Ed Lee Jones, better known as Ed Too Tall Jones. Yeah, that famous Dallas Cowboy player that played from 1974 through the 1984 season. I'm sorry, 1989 season. Missed one year, became a pro boxer when he retired in 1979, but came back and uh, played some really good football there from during the whole decade of the 80s after his retirement. So uh, that just goes to show you after retirement, hey, you still got another 10 years left in you. Well, all the retirees are going to be emailing me now and uh, complaining that I said that one. But Ed was in three Pro Bowls. He was a one-time All-Pro, won one Super Bowl championship, and his sack total for, now remember we got all those extra uh, totals back before 1981 we just told you about, 106 altogether if you count his entire career according to the Pro Football Reference. Uh, com. So, great career. I am would not be surprised that we'll see him in the Hall of Fame one of these upcoming years, probably deservedly so. But I can tell you this, he will make it as one of our greatest number 72s because he wore that jersey number for 16 seasons, number 72. He is our fourth player on our list of uh, great players. Now, Matt Light, here's another player. You know, very exciting. More of a contemporary player. Played tackle uh, 2001 all the way through 2011, and his entire career was with those New England Patriots. Yes, he was uh, one of the protectors uh, for um, um, a certain guy named Tom Brady, the left tackle, covered his blind side and did it very well. Started 153 games of 155, uh, three Pro Bowls, one time as an All-Pro, three Super Bowl championships. I mean, what more can you say about this guy? He was just a, a great blocker, and, you know, Tom Brady loved him to death, so did Belichick, and I think we do too. He is going to go as number five on our greatest number 72s in history. Uh, Joe Nash is another name that we would like to discuss here. And Joe, 
Well, he's another great NFL resume. Uh, he played for the Seattle Seahawks, came in in 1982, and stayed with that team all the way through the 1996 season. And uh, Joe Nash, another player, 15 seasons uh, wearing that number 72. And what he did, he made one All-Pro and one Pro Bowl as a nose tackle, defensive tackle for those Seahawks. I'm going to put him on standby. I'm not quite sure he is going to make it on yet because we still have a lot of players to talk about. But he has a potential to possibly get on there with uh, these other gentlemen. And Dron Talbert. Now, there's an interesting name. Uh, one that you don't hear much about. But we're going to talk about him today because he played defensive tackle, defensive end for the Los Angeles Rams from 1967 all the way to 1980. And what a defender he was. 84 and a half sacks during his career. Uh, he started uh, 186 games with those 84 and a half sacks. So roughly, you know, one every two games he got. Um he, uh, you know, just another great player out of the University of Texas um, and did not have any all pro seasons, but did make it to one Pro Bowl. And he's another one that we're going to have to put as a reserve member. Maybe we'll come back to and talk about him uh, as we go on. Now, Bob Vogel, here's a guy that I got an opportunity to shake hands with and to meet uh, just recently at the PFRA convention. Uh, he played tackle for the Baltimore Colts, 1963 all the way to 1972. You know, played with Johnny Unitas and, and company under Don Shula. And boy, this guy has some great stories to tell. He is quite a character, quite a great storyteller. If you ever have an opportunity to hear him talk, make, take advantage of it. But he came out of Ohio State, uh, grew up right around the Canton area, and I believe they call it Stark County there. And he uh, dressed for 140 games, started 140 games, uh, made it to five Pro Bowls in his career, one time as an All-Pro, a Super Bowl championship, Super Bowl V, and one NFL championship. Uh, I believe that was back in 1964 uh, that the Colts won that. So just a... brilliant career and with all those Pro Bowls, Super Bowl rings, championship ring, well he is going to be our sixth player, Bob Vogel, plus what a nice guy and what a great storyteller he is, very interesting going on our list here. Uh, Brad Hopkins is another guy that uh, we want to make sure that we talk about here because Brad, he has a great uh, resume too as a tackle and he came in with the Houston Oilers franchise 1993 and uh, of course they switched into the Tennessee Oilers, then the Tennessee Titans and he stayed they're all the way till 2005. So both cities, both names of that franchise, and uh, what a great player he was. Made it to two Pro Bowls in his career, 188 starts and 194 games. But unfortunately, he's another guy that we're going to have to sort of put a little pause on, and maybe we'll come back to him as we go closer. But Trey Thomas is one we want to look at here. Because Trey, well... I think he's got some interesting statistics. He made it into three Pro Bowls as a tackle out of Florida State and with the Philadelphia Eagles from 1988 through the 2008 season and then 2009 as a Jacksonville Jaguar. But three Pro Bowls, uh, that's that's pretty solid. Six foot seven, 349 pounds, a very large man with a very large responsibility. 174 games dressed, 168 started. All very good numbers. And we're going to put uh, take a good look at him when we come back at the end here because I think he really has a chance to uh, make it on this list. But uh, Don Mosbar was a, another one that we want to look at because Don definitely has a chance as much as anybody else here. He played all the line positions, offensive line, center, tackle, and guard for the Raiders organization, 1983 until 1994. So great long uh, career as a Raider. Started 156 games of 173, three Pro Bowls, one Super Bowl championship, six foot six, 285 out of USC. And I think uh, Don Mosbar's got a real good opportunity of possibly making our list here. And we'll see when we get closer near the end, but we'll hold out for right now. Larry Eisenhower. Uh, you know, spelled a little bit different than Eisenhower, the president. E I S E N H A U E R. A little bit different spelling there, but what a gr- great career he had. He played with the Boston Patriots in the AFL 1961 all the way to 1969 as their right defensive end. 43 and a half sacks, according to those uh, great stats on Pro Football Reference. Four Pro Bowls, three times as an All Pro or All AFL uh, player um, out of Boston College. Another great, great. Uh, 
player there, and we'll have to see about him uh, having those eight great AFL numbers he had. Lincoln Kennedy, huh, what can you say about this man? A very large man, a very great blocker, uh, offensive tackle, offensive guard, played with Atlanta his first three seasons, 93 to 95, and then became an Oakland Raider from 1996 to 2003. So eight years with Oakland, three as a Falcon, and he started 141 games of 169, uh, made it into three Pro Bowls and one time as an All Pro, and six foot six, 335 pounds. Not going to have a def- too many defenders moving him out of the way. And another guy that I think we're going to take a good hard look at as we get down near the end here, Dexter Manley. Man, there's a monster of a man playing defense. Not sure if I want to line up across the way from him because he was a superior defensive end, uh, right defensive end with the Washington Redskins from 1981 all the way to 1989. Played one year as with the... Phoenix and then one year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at that same position so 11 years total 103 and a half sacks uh, those are all NFL accounted for sacks because he started in 81 I'm sorry except for 6 of them 81 did, they did not count so uh, Pro Football Reference added 6 on there 143 games uh, played uh, that he was in and one Pro Bowl, one All Pro, and two time Super Bowl champion, and Dexter Manley. He wore that uh, jersey for nine seasons, and uh, very good numbers there from him as well. And another one we're going to take a good hard look at at the end here and see what we can do. Uh, Jim Dombrowski. Man, these names just keep coming. I'm not making it up, folks. These are just some superior athletes that wore a 72. Jim wore that jersey number for 11 seasons, and he wore them with the New Orleans Saints, 1986 to 1996, as a guard and tackle on the offensive side of the ball, out of uh, University of Virginia, and a six foot five, 300 pounder himself. And man, this man started 137 games of 151 that he dressed, and did not have any Pro Bowls or All Pro seasons. So probably uh, not sure we're going to be able to, to bring him on, but. Uh, good name to talk about and Kent Hill is another one we want to take a look at and you know Kent was another uh, very solid guard tackle uh, played for the LA Rams from 1979 to 1985 and then played with Houston and Rams in 86 and just Houston in uh, 1987 the Oilers that is but we're 72 his whole year career five Pro Bowls um, that stands pretty tall when you're talking about Pro Bowls with these guys. Uh, Ron McDowell, he's another one that we want to take a peek at. And probably our last one before we go into deliberations. Two-time uh, Pro Bowler, one time as an All-Pro, two AFL championships, uh, played with the St. Louis Cardinals in 61, and then went in the AFL uh, with Houston uh, for one year, 62, and then with the Buffalo Bills from uh, 63 to 1970, and then with the Washington Redskins for the rest of his career, the last eight seasons of his career. Um, but had 77 and a half sacks in that uh, time frame, according to Pro Football Reference, 240 games, and great player there. So another one that uh, we have to put under some strong consideration um, for what he did in the AFL. Now, uh, I guess uh, Travis Frederick is another one maybe we better take a peek at here. Um, and uh, Jer- Jerry Shirk and Eric Fisher. So first, let's talk about Travis Frederick. Now, Travis, he uh, you know had a great career as a center, Dallas Cowboys 2013 through 2019. I think he might have opted out and he might be back this year even. I came out of the University of Wisconsin. Um, one All-Pro season, five times as a Pro Bowler. Uh, very good uh, numbers there for him in his young career. Uh, Jerry Shirk, uh, another one we said we wanted to take a good look at. Jerry was a defensive tackle, defensive end, and nose tackle for the Cleveland Browns from 1970 all the way to 1981. So really secured the center of that defensive line. 70 and a half sacks according to the Pro Football Reference. Four Pro Bowls, one time as an All-Pro, 147 games. Definitely uh, worthy of uh, talking about again here at the end. And Eric Fisher, I guess, will be round out our, our top uh, numbers here that we want to talk about. And Eric, you know, what an offensive line uh, career he has had. Offensive tackle, 
Uh, he played from 2013 through 2020, so he's still playing Kansas City Chiefs his entire career so far. I believe he's still with them. And he's made it to two Pro Bowls and, of course, won a Super Bowl championship just a couple of years ago. And uh, a great blocker for pa- Patrick Mahomes. So we will put him under consideration, too. Uh, not sure where he, this will go, but um, I think we got a lot of good guys to talk about here. So, so far we have six players. Let's just go and review. Dan Deardorff, Bill George, Henry Jordan are three, three Hall of Famers. They're in. Ed Tutal Jones, Matt Light, and Bob Vogel, the other offense tackle. Great players. Those are our six in. So we need four more. And one's under consideration. Joe Nash, Deron Talbert, uh, Brad Hopkins, Trey Thomas, Don Mosbar, Larry Eisenhower, Lincoln Kennedy, Dexter Manley, Kent Hill, Ron McDowell, Jerry Shirk, Travis Frederick, and Eric Fisher. So we need to pick four of those. Well, I'm going to say uh, Don Mosbar is definitely going to go on our list. Uh, he will be our seventh on. And I'm going to say Lincoln Kennedy will be our eighth because what a blocker he was. Well, now we got a, some uh, good uh, decisions to make here because we have some really good players on here. And I am going to probably have to default here and uh, take a peek at some stats. I think I'm going to put uh, Travis Frederick on as our ninth because young career, and he has that many Pro Bowls under his belt already. And, boy, this this next uh, choice is really tough. But I think I'm going to go with uh, Jerry Shirk, uh, that Cleveland uh, defensive tackle that just had uh, say 70 and a half sacks and uh, really played really well. And I think he's going to wrap out our top ten uh, for our greatest jersey number 72s of all time in NFL history. You could have uh, an honorable mention for a bunch of players that we had talked about there. But boy, what's a bunch of great number 72s that played the game in the National Football League. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this. Now, if you see anybody that you disagree with or maybe somebody we missed, you know, sometimes that happens, email us at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. We will be sure to take a look at it and make any corrections if needed. Uh, we, we count and value your opinion and uh, what you have to say. So we really appreciate that if you give us that feedback, pigskindispatch at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you check us out at Pigskin Dispatch. We have all of these numbers number by series you know this is number 72 so you have 71 before the 72 before this because we started with zero and you know we have about uh, 17 more to go here and we are just excited about this series and we're glad that you're enjoying it uh, your support for it has been uh, off the charts you know it's unworldly uh, we didn't think that we would get this much support for it so we thank you for checking in on that and uh, listening to our podcast and you know see all of our podcasts pigskindispatch.com where all of our blog posts and uh, we have some great exciting things going on before besides the football by numbers we are talking about each week we have a pre-world war ii pro football team that we're going to talk about that's lost the time and honor them uh so just this past week we, we just talked about the columbus panhandles with uh, author chris willis of nfl films and boy what an exciting thing that was to, to talk with chris uh we have more of those planned and some great guests lined up here so every monday we have that coming out and you know of course we have our football history headlines each and every day and the football by numbers like i said we have like uh, 16 17 more to go um so we're excited about that and we have some plenty of great things coming up planned for you during the football season too uh and some hall of famer showcases will be at the hall of fame this weekend and getting you some great scoops on all the players going into 2020 and 2021 uh, classes so excited to do that for you and tell you firsthand how that goes so uh, make sure you check us out also on the sportshistorynetwork.com your headquarters of sports yesteryear and check out all my fellow podcasters there too because they have some great sports history to share with you as well and until tomorrow everybody have a great gridiron day That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. That's it.
the Sports History Network. We're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings you sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row One catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row One Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.